into his house once more time to worship. Amen. We thank and praise God for Saturday. And if it's Saturday, it's Saturday night live worship here at LWM. We thank and praise God for all that he's doing. We thank and praise God for how he's moving by his spirit. Amen. For truly God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. You might be going through something. You might be dealing with something. But I'm here with good news. The good news is that God is still in control. The good news is that Jesus is still alive and well. And here's the best news. The best news is that you're here seven days later. You're here on the other side of whatever it is. And even if you're going through, you made it to the other side by being here for seven days. So if for no other reason, that is reason enough to give God praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship and magnify the Lord on today. And as we prepare to go into prayer, you just begin to praise God now for all that he's doing for you. We just, just begin to praise him now for all that he's done for you and for how he's blessing you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Glory, God. Glory, 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 God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We magnify and we exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name, oh God, and we lift you up, oh God. We lift your name on high. We give you glory and praise, oh God. You're worthy, oh God, of all the honor. You're worthy, oh God, of all the glory. You're worthy, oh God, of all the praise. We love you today, oh God. We magnify you and exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, because you're worthy. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, because you're great. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, because you're mighty. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, because your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives, oh God. We bless you, Lord God, for how you watched over us, oh God. We bless you, Lord, for how you kept us, oh God. We praise you, Lord God, for your presence being in the house, oh God. We praise you for the privilege of being present in the house, oh God. Father, someone got up with the intent of worshiping you today, oh God, and they're not here. Somebody got up with the intent of giving you praise, oh God, and they're not here. Somebody got up with the intent of giving their lives to you, oh God, and they're not here. But you see fit to watch over us through danger seen and unseen, oh God. You seem fit to continue to keep us, oh God. You seem fit to continue to bless us, oh God. You seem fit to keep breath in our bodies, oh God. You seem fit to give us a reasonable portion of health and strength, oh God. So for all of those things, we say thank you, oh God. We thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you and praise you for your faithfulness, Lord God. Even in the midst of our faithlessness, oh God. We thank you for loving us unconditionally, oh God. We praise you for giving us clarity and understanding, oh God. We worship and magnify your name, oh God, for being the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, oh God. We exalt your name and lift you up, oh God, for loving us unconditionally, oh God. We indeed bless you, Lord God, and forget not your many benefits, oh God. We thank you for being the healer, Lord God, that you are. We thank you for being the deliverer, Lord God, that you are. We thank you for being the way maker, Lord God, that you are. We thank you for being our shield, oh God. We thank you for being our strength, oh God. We thank you for being our shelter, oh God. We we thank you for being the lifter of our head, oh God. We thank you for being our fortress, oh God. We thank you for being our rock in the weary land, oh God. We thank you for being our blessing in the morning, oh God. We thank you for being our song in the noonday, oh God. We thank you for being our peace and our comfort that we lie down with in the evening, oh God. Father, all that you've been to us, Father God, personally, all that you've been to us, Lord God, in the midst of all that we've gone through, Father God, we thank you for it right now, Father God. We praise you for being our Savior. Lord God. We praise you for being our Lord, oh God. We praise you for being our wake maker, oh God. We praise you for being our Alpha and Omega, oh God. We praise you for being our beginning and our end, oh God. We praise you for being our first and our last, oh God. So we'll give you the very best of our praise, oh God. We'll give you the very best of our worship, oh God. We'll lift up, Lord God, holy hands in the sanctuary, oh God. We'll make a joyful noise unto you, oh God. Father God, we shall cry loud and spare not, oh God. We bless your holy name and worship you, Lord God. Father God, we worship and magnify you, Father God, for being faithful, oh God. We worship and magnify you, oh God, for the transformation that you're doing even now, Lord God, for how you're transforming our city, oh God, for how you're transforming our community, oh God. We pray tonight, Lord God, that you begin the transformation with us, oh God. Transform our worship, oh God. Transform our praise, oh God. Transform our mindset, oh God. Transform our focus, oh God. Let us not focus, Lord God, on what the world will say we don't have, oh God. But keep our focus on what we do have, oh God. We have you, oh God. We have your love, oh God. We have your peace, oh God. We have your joy, oh God. We have your presence, oh God. We praise you, Lord God, for all that you've given us. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh God, we magnify your name, oh God. We set the atmosphere for you to have your way, oh God. You said in your word, Lord God, that you would have the praises of your people, oh God. So we offer you all that we have, Lord God, in praise, oh God. We lift up your name, Lord God. We lift our voices to you, oh God. We lift our hands to you, oh God. We lift our hearts to you, oh God. We lift our spirits to you, oh God. We ask you to have your way, oh God. We tell you that you're wonderful because you are, oh God. We tell you that you're worthy because you are, oh God. We tell you that you're mighty, oh God, because you are, oh God. We tell you that you're lovely because you are, oh God. We tell you that you're awesome because you are, oh God. We tell you that you are everything because you are, oh God. Father, we praise you for being here, oh God. We praise you for being in the midst, oh God. We praise you for your presence, oh God. Father God, you're in the midst, oh God. You said we're two or three are gathered together, Lord God. Did you be in the midst, oh God? Father, the condition is met, Father, and we thank you for being here right now. All we ask is that you have your way tonight, oh God. Move by your spirit like never before, oh God. Father, let signs and wonders follow, oh God, because we believe you, oh God. Let miracles happen, oh God, because we believe you, oh God. Let transformation take place, God, because we believe you, oh God. Let deliverance go forth, God, because we believe you, oh God. We thank you for doing it for your glory, oh God. We praise you for doing it for your glory, oh God. We worship you for doing it for your glory, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Oh God, we lift you up and we magnify you, God. We bless you, Lord, and we love you, oh God. We take time right now just to say thank you, God. All we ask tonight is for you to have your way, God. That's all we want, God. We want more of you, oh God. We want more of you in every area of our lives, God. We want more of you, God, in our worship. We want more of you in our living, oh God. We want more of you in our speech, oh God. We want more of you in our lives, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, God. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way, oh God. Oh, we love you, Lord, and we magnify you. We dedicate this time to you, oh God. We ask you to have your way, God. Holy Spirit, take full and complete control now. We thank you for the souls that are going to be saved. We thank you for the lives that are going to be changed. We thank you for the movement that's going to take place, oh God. And we give your name, the honor, and praise forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your name right now. We lift you up, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our scripture for this evening is found in 1 Thessalonians, it's the fifth chapter, verses 15 through 18. It says, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And verse 18 says, in everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Hallelujah. We indeed give God thanks. We indeed give God praise. Can we take just a moment to give God thanks as the word says hallelujah. Let's praise him for his mighty acts. Let's, let's praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let's, let's give him thanks for watching over us for seven days. He didn't have to do it but he did. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we give thanks, we're going to thank God because he's really all that we need. We don't need anything else. We don't need anything else but God. God provides our needs, our desires, our wants. Everything that we need is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
God. All we need is Him. Hallelujah. We lack nothing because He is truly all that we need. I thank God for being everything in my life. I thank God that I lack nothing because He is truly everything that I need. Hallelujah. I had another song on here, but it seemed like it jumped to that one. Maybe God is telling us to tell him that he is Alpha and Omega. Let's just go there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to give God a worship. Hallelujah.
the things you won't be able to have no other choice but to give God praise. Because he's truly worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being such a good God. We thank you for being such a worthy God. We thank you for being faithful, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody can do us like you can, God. You've never failed us. You've never left our side. God, for that we give you praise. And we'll honor you, Lord Jesus. You are truly the beginning and the end. Don't know what would be without you, Jesus. Don't know what our lives would be without you, Jesus. Oh God, that we believe in you above everything else, oh God. 
God. We're here to let you know that we magnify you, oh God. That we lift you up, oh God. That we bless you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, God. We glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lay ourselves out before you, Lord God, in worship. We lay ourselves out before you with no pretense, oh God. We ask you to have your way on tonight, oh God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. You're in the sanctuary, oh God. We know you're here. Move, oh God, from heart to heart. Move up and down roads, oh God. Move from seat to seat, oh God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're welcome, God. You're welcome, God. You're welcome, God. Have your way, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I dare you to praise him right now. I dare you to praise him for answered prayer. I dare you to praise him for doing that thing that you think is impossible. I, I dare you to lift him up and worship him right now for doing the impossible because we serve a God that specializes in things that seem impossible. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for thing according to the power that's at work in us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, as we prepare to go into your word, oh God. We go into your word, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Giving you all the glory. Thank you, God. We go into your word, oh God. Rejoicing because you are indeed Alpha and Omega. Yes, God. We go into your word, oh God. Thank you, God. Praising you because indeed you are the beginning and you are the end. You are the first, you are the last, you are our everything, oh God. We ask you to have your way in your word on today. Speak boldly, God. Speak clearly, God. That this your servant will say nothing more or less than what thus saith you. We bind up everything that's not like you, O oh God, that would hinder your word from going forth and we lose, God, the liberty that comes with your spirit being present. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. We give your name the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. As always, we give honor to God for all that he's continuing to do in and through our lives. We give honor, as always, in this house to whom honor is due. Give honor in his absence to, to Pastor Fernando Walker. We give honor to a visitor. Amen. We thank you and praise you for being with us, Pastor Ants. Amen. We thank and praise God for you as always. We give honor and, and praise to God for our First Lady. Amen. We thank and praise God for you. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you, the people of God. There is a word from the Lord on this evening. We're on the heels of uh, our Transform My City Conference. It's an interfaith, interdenominational conference that began Friday evening and has had a host of, of, of presenters this morning. The glorious time of the Lord, the presence of the Lord truly has been and is still here. And in the midst of all the word that's gone forth, the word, that's a capstone word, is right here. If you turn with me to a passage of scripture that we all know, that we all love, the Lord's given a different spin on it on tonight. In the Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter, verses 16 and 17, you'll find written as follows. You probably know it by heart. <coughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not come into the world that the world might be condemned, but that the world through, through him might be saved. That whomever might believe in him, in him whoever, that the devil is alive, let's try that again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Let me get it in front of me here. Yeah, the devil is alive. He's trying to play games and we're not doing and it falls right in line as we're going to see in just a moment with what we were talking about all day in the conference. For God so loved the world, it says in verse three, uh, verse 16 of John chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. And the payoff indeed is verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And the word of the Lord indeed is blessed as we speak today to the subject, lessons in love. Amen. Man. Lessons in love. If I had to put a subtitle to it, the subtitle is this, class is in session. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And that's why the enemy's fighting so hard for the word not to go forth. Because the enemy knows that we find ourselves in the same position that Nicodemus found himself in. And what I mean by that is this, Nicodemus, for those who may not know, Nicodemus was a religious leader, a religious leader of the law in that day. Nicodemus was bought and paid for, if you will, by the religious order of the day. But what Nicodemus began to discover is that there's something different here. There's something different in the teaching of this Jesus. There's something different here in the doctrine that he's preaching. There's something different here in how the way people respond, how the way people react, even how the way people feel. This is, 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 is moving me so that, that I need to go see him. But Nicodemus didn't want to be seen by everybody else. So what Nicodemus did is what many of us do today that get in trouble when they're in high school. Nicodemus found himself attending night school. He found himself attending night school because the word says that we lead into our passage of scripture that Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Because he figured if he had showed up in the daytime, he would have been ridiculed. He would have been questioned. He would have been scorned. He would have been looked at as outside of doing what it is. That God had called him to do. But, but what Nicodemus realized that there was a lesson that the religious books couldn't teach you. There was a lesson that society hadn't gotten a hold of as it pertained to what needed to be done. There was a lesson about a secret sauce that Jesus was in the process of introducing into the world that still runs true today for us to apply so that we can see the change in the world today. And that secret sauce is love. The secret sauce is not just any kind of love. It's the agape love. It's the selfless love that truly transcends comprehension, that truly transcends understanding. It, it bypasses emotions. It, it bypasses logic. It gets to the point of having a mind sold out and set on the prospect of making sure that the individual that we've chosen to love gets the very best of everything, no matter what it costs us. Amen. And that was something that sounded different to Nicodemus. It's kind of like if you have a favorite radio station, you pretty much know all the songs on the station, then you hear a new song, it's like, wait a minute, I never heard this before. This is something new. And so you try to focus into it, and you, you try to zone in, and as you zone into it and focus into it, you begin to catch bits and pieces of it. Because, hey, that's catchy. It might be the bass line. It might be the beat. It might be a word. It might be a phrase. And what happens is that when you realize that, that, that you like it, even before you realize you like it, you find yourself drawn and compelled to listen to it again. So you have the station on, and you listen to it because most stations play records over and give or take every three or four hours anyway. So it comes up again, and you listen more closely, and you catch a little bit more of it. Nicodemus found himself in a, in a spot where he caught a little bit of this and he was so intrigued he had to go see Jesus by night. Mm -hmm. And when he came to see Jesus by night, he came to see Jesus and what Jesus did, he did the pre-screening process, uh, a paraphrase. He, he began a dialogue with Nicodemus and he got an understanding that, okay, you kind of got a, 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 an idea, you, you're, you're in the hall, you meet the prerequisite for the class. So I tell you what, have a seat Nicodemus, class is in session. Have a, have a seat because I need to teach you something. I need to teach you something that once you learn it is going to revolutionize how you do ministry. It's going to revolutionize how you view ministry. It's going to revolutionize how you go about ministering to people in every aspect of your life. It's going to revolutionize how you view success and how you view perceived failure. It's going to revolutionize everything you ever knew about what it is that you did. And it's going to revolutionize it because it's going to take the focus off of what religion taught you to put it on, which was how you do things. And it's going to put the focus on where it belongs and that it's on God and what he desires to do because he loves us like the song says he loves us oh how he loves us yes. but in loving something and in loving somebody it doesn't come without a cost mm -hmm. it doesn't come without an understanding it doesn't come without an education on the thing that you love mm -hmm. 
Because it's in and through that education that you start to gain an understanding of why you love that thing so much. And so basically what Jesus was doing is he was taking Nicodemus through the prerequisites and saying, okay, Nicodemus, you, you, you say that, that, that you love the one that the scriptures talk about. You say that you love the one that the prophets prophesied about. Help me understand why you love him. Nicodemus like, well, I love him because thus and so. I love him because the Bible says this, the Bible says that. Jesus is like, okay, you're in the ballpark, but have a seat. I want to teach you something. Mm -hmm. And what I want to teach you is I want to teach you about this thing called love. Because this thing called love will prompt you and drive you to do things that you never thought you could do. This thing called love will, 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 will motivate you to, to stay longer than, than you ever thought you'd be able to stay. To, to say things in, in your wildest dreams you never thought you'd say to someone. To, to, to yield your will and to yield your control to someone. Something that, that you said you'd never yield because you've been hurt before. You, you've been mislooked over before. You've been messed over before. And like us, God is saying, I need you to understand that it's my love that's keeping you. And because it's my love that's keeping you, it's okay for you to exhale. It's okay for, let, let, for, for you to let me see your scar. It's okay for you to let me see your imperfections. It's okay because I'm not going to condemn you because the word says that there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. So what Jesus was doing is he had Nicodemus in night school. And he began teaching Nicodemus about love and about the lessons that come with love and how limitless God's love is and how desperately God desires us to lay claim to this love and in return as we lay claim to it, it's going to stir something on the inside of us that Nicodemus, you're feeling just the outer edges of it right now. Amen. That when you get a full hold of this and truly sink your spiritual teeth into this, it's going to transform and revolutionize how you do everything that you do because everything that you do now you're not you're doing it now because you feel you have to you're doing it now because you have man telling you you got to get up at this time you got to pray at this time you got to study at this time you got to say it this way but when the king of kings and lord of lords prompts you because he loves you and the veil is torn away because when the veil gets torn from the top to the bottom when all this is over with you can take that veil off of your face you can take those things that you put up to try to hide yourself from God away because he loves you just the way you are. Amen. Amen. And he desires us to love him just the way we are. This is why we realize all that he is. We can say that, 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 that he indeed is our final maker. He was there in our beginning. He's going to be there until our end. He's going to be with us at every point in between. And what God desires us to learn is the same lessons that, that Nicodemus learned that night about love. Nicodemus first learned that love is sacrificial. Amen. Amen. See, agape love is sacrificial. Two of our friends this morning taught on transformational marriage this morning. And they said that married couples have to remember and understand that they're a team. And they have to understand that the, the, the centerpiece of that team, the quarterback of that team, has to be God. And that falls in lockstep with what my pastor taught me about marriage, that marriage is designed to show and form a complete picture of who God is. And the completeness in showing that picture of who God is is found in the vows that are taken when two individuals decide to become one. Because in the midst of those vows, it talks about being there for richer, for poor, for better, for worse, in sickness and health. In other words, making a commitment That's right. to choose this person over how you're feeling, over what's going on, over where you are, over what you do and don't have, over the situation, whether it's the way you want it to be or exact opposite, over whether or not you see eye to eye or not, you make the choice that no matter what, today I choose you, tomorrow I choose you, forever I choose you. That's the mindset we've got to have with God, but far too many of us that profess the name of Jesus Christ have a stronger mindset about marriage than we do about God. Because the motivating factor, like with Nicodemus, might very well be the wrong motivating factor. 
might be so concerned in making things look right to the public that in your mind and in your spirit, you're suffering and going through because you're broken, because you feel you can't tell that love when I got an issue with this, I got an issue with that. But what God is saying is, when you love the way I love, it's sacrificial. Because in our text, what's happening here is that Jesus is teaching Nicodemus that, that God is willing to go all in on us. And think about that. I don't gamble, but I've seen and heard enough people that do to let me know that all in means that you, you got nothing else left to give. All in means that if you win, you're in great shape. But if you lose, there's nothing left. You have nothing left to give. You, have, you don't even have enough left to function. And Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, I can see him at the spiritual chalkboard. Nicodemus, you've got to understand, as John 3, 16 are written, and 17 are written on the board, that, that God is willing to go all in on us. He's willing to go all in on you because his love knows no limit. And, 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 and what Jesus does is he puts us into perspective for Nicodemus by saying, look at the very beginning of this. For God so loved the world that he gave. Mm -hmm. Period. There's such a thing, Nicodemus, as a simple sentence. And a simple sentence has a subject, has a verb, and has a destination. God is a subject. He loved is a verb. The destination is that he gave. Mm -hmm. And what he was trying to teach Nicodemus is that what happens is you, we make this thing more difficult than it needs to be. This is why you're having to come to me at night. It would be best for you to come to me during the day because that way this message will be shared with everybody. But you're more concerned with what people think than what God desires to tell you. And there are far too many people that are in the world today that are walking around the community right now that are more concerned with what the world is telling them that they can't do, what the world is telling them that they'll never be, what the world is telling them that they're not. And God has said that you are everything I created you to be. Take the veil off and let me love you. Because I loved you enough to give. I loved you enough to bring you to a destination. But what the enemy does is he, he gets us sidetracked by reminding us of all the stuff that we did that disqualifies us in his economy of scale. But we don't operate in that economy anymore. That's right. And Jesus was trying to help Nicodemus understand and shift his perspective. To the reality that God loves the world so much that he gave. And when I looked at that word gave and looked at the word give, what the Holy Spirit shared with me is that giving is the most radical and permanent method of changing ownership between two parties. Because if you let a friend borrow something, that implies that your intent is to still hold on to it, right? Mm -hmm. If you sell something to a friend or to anybody, that means that you are now assigning a value that you deem is worth. And what God is saying here is that I'm not going to assign a value to you because you are priceless. I'm not going to put you in a state where I'm letting you borrow this or letting someone borrow you from me because I created you in my image and in my likeness and your mind. So what I'm going to do is the most radical and permanent thing that I can do. I'm going to give you mm -hmm. my son. Amen. I'm going to give you my son because it's the most radical and permanent method of changing ownership. And what God is doing in that, in, in that instant Jesus was letting Nicodemus know is he was using that, that, that transaction, that giving interaction to demonstrate his level of commitment to us. And what he desires is for us to exhibit that same level of commitment to others. But what we do, not only do we not show that same level of commitment to others, but many times we don't even show that same level of commitment consistently to God. So true. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. That's absolute and that's fact. Amen. If underneath it we wrote the sentence, for I so loved God that I gave myself away, is that true? Pastor, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is this. Have you decided if it comes down to God 
of my job that you told me to walk away from God, I'm choosing you. If it comes down to God or walking away from a relationship with a friend that God has shown you is toxic, God, I'm choosing you. If it comes down to, to, to God and, and, and choosing something that's an unpopular decision with your family and, and you're going to face the wrath of your family, God, I'm choosing you. Are we at a point where we're actually saying that? Because if we're at a point where we're actually saying that, now we're demonstrating sacrificial love to God. Because sacrificial love or a godly love, as I stated, is making the choice to give in such a way so that it means the very best for the one that's being loved, even if it means the worst for you. So even if over here it means I lose my job, even if right here it means that, 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 that my spouse and I are at war, even if right here it means that, that me and my family are constantly going at it, the fact that I please my God means that the seeds are sown there and he sees that the love is true and he can erase that question mark and put a period there. And when fact is on top, a fact. The fact of the matter is, is that God will not fail you. You might want to give up, but don't you dare give up because God loves you enough to bring you through whatever it is you're going through. Amen. Amen. He's not going to allow you to make those choices. Yes, Lord. He's not going to allow you to make that sacrifice and there not be a reward for that sacrifice. Jesus made the sacrifice. He hadn't made it here yet, but we know the rest of the story. Jesus made the sacrifice, and the reward was that all authority was given unto him. The reward was that all power was given unto him. The reward was he now had the keys and the title deed to hell, to death, hell, and the grave. And you might say, that's awesome, but the blessing is to show us even in the midst of the reward, God was showing us what love is all about because all of those things that he laid claim to were not for him. All those things that he laid claim to were to bless and benefit us. Amen. So how dare we be in a place where we're not willing to sacrifice a little sleep? How dare we be in a place where we're not willing to sacrifice a little extra money? How dare we be in a place where we're not willing to sacrifice some comfort? Jesus paid it all. Amen. That's right. Every time I feel myself getting too full of my flesh in the situation, Holy Spirit reminds me, okay, but you're not being nailed to a tree mm -hmm. for no reason. And that shuts me up every time. And I'm convicted, I'm like, Lord, forgive me for being so concerned about me and my parents that I forget that you love me so much that you gave your son, who in turn loved me so much that he didn't care about what he looked like. We've all seen the passion of the Christ, so we know that Jesus was not in perfect and pristine condition when he said into your hands, Father, I commit my spirit. We know that Jesus had been impaled through his wrists. We know that Jesus had been impaled through the arches of his feet. We know that Jesus had a hole in his side from being stuck with the spear. We know that Jesus had been beaten with the canine tails to the point that flesh was missing and his organs were almost hanging out. We know that to get him stretched out far enough, they had to pull his arms and his limbs might have been dislocated. Mm. It wasn't a pretty sight. We know he had three inch thorns that had cut into his hair, into his head, his hairline, and cut flesh all the way down to his brow line. It wasn't a pretty sight. It wasn't designed to be pretty. Jesus is like, I don't care about being pretty. I'm willing to make the sacrifice if it means that it's making a beautiful life for the creation that we made. Man. That's love. And that's the measure of love that God desires us to function in. He doesn't care how ugly it gets for us out there. Paul said it best to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. So guess what? If I go out today and, and go out to do witnessing as God called me to, if for whatever reason I'm called home, I'm still rejoicing. Will I miss my family? Absolutely, I miss my family. Will I miss my wife? Absolutely, I miss my wife. But as much as I love my wife, as much as, as much as I love my family, I'm in the presence of the Lord. And if I could get back in and have a way to let them know, I'd be like, do all you can to love God unconditionally because there's so much better here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus began to teach Nicodemus the lessons of love. And he began to show him the sincerity that comes with unconditional love. 
And what Jesus did is that he began to give Nicodemus insight into the seriousness of the matter of eternal salvation to God. Because see, when you love somebody, their issue becomes your issue. And when it becomes your issue, it becomes top priority. Mm -hmm. I got this habit at home when my wife's like, let me ask you something. TV's on, I mute the TV. She's like, you ain't gotta do that. I'm like, oh, I do. And the reason why I do is that you are my number one priority and you've asked for my attention. I wanna give you my undivided attention, especially if you're telling me that you need a response from me. I don't want anything to hinder that response. I don't want anything to interfere with that response because that is important. Some people might say, it don't take all that. I'm a firm believer it takes all that and then some. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it took all that and then some for us to get to the point where we can be called children of the most high God again. Because it's one thing to be in the doghouse with your spouse when your spouse says you never listen to me, but it's another thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And the word lets us know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And there are a whole lot of people that never pick up their gift. And when you don't pick up your gift, your gift after a period of time gets returned to sender, which means now you're left with the wages that you have. And there are a whole lot of folks walking around saying, well, Jesus loves me, this I know. But what you don't know is that you not return that love in time. And this is a serious matter. That's right. Jesus is making it crystal clear to Nicodemus that, that God's not only all in with his commitment, but he's clearly mindful of the value of who is being sacrificed in exchange for his life. I watch movies sometimes and I see the poker scenes in some of these movies and the one guy will go all in and put all his money in and the other person is so convinced that the hand that they have is a winning hand that they'll go all in, but they ain't got enough money to cover it. So what they'll do is they'll grab something of value. They might grab a, a gun that they have. They might grab a, a piece of jewelry they got on. They might grab a watch. They might grab uh, the keys of their car. They, something else, they add something else that in the grand scheme of things is really overkill. It's more than what you really need to add to fix this. Catch this though, they're doing it because they're so convinced that the hand that they have is good enough to win this pot. And this pot is valuable to me because not only do I have all my stuff in it, but I have all your stuff in it. And some of the stuff you got really doesn't belong with you. So I'm going to do whatever I can to get it away from you. This was a conversation that was going on in a war room in heaven. When man sinned, it could be said that it was overkill. But Jesus made it crystal clear, which is why he took Nicodemus back to the black door. And he showed him. Nicodemus, while a simple sentence would have been enough, what God wanted to do to make is make this a compound sentence. And a compound sentence usually puts modifiers in to describe stuff and make it even plainer. So instead of him saying, for God so loved the world that he gave, which was enough, he modified it by saying, for God so loved the world, surely he's all in, that he gave his only begotten son, which was way more valuable than what was needed in this instant. But God is like, you know what? Not only am I all in, but I'm serious about this thing. Hmm. Many times we say we love God, but we don't show God that we're serious. Because we're not willing to put any skin in the game. Pastor, what do you mean? God, I'm serious about prayer. Okay to meet me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I like to sleep, God. I, can, can we do 6 o'clock in the morning? No, because that's not a sacrifice. Because you get up for work at 6.30 in the morning. That's not a sacrifice. Lord, I want to study your word to show myself approved unto you. Okay, then turn off your favorite TV show every Monday night and study with me in three hours. But God only comes on once a week. That's what the devil do show me thinking, but... If you stop and think about it, you got, you got Hulu, you got DVD, you got this, you got that, you got YouTube. It's not that you can't see it. What am I saying? What I'm saying is far too many of us that say we love God aren't loving God at the same level that he's loving us. That's right. God is loving us unconditionally. Some of us are loving God solely at a fleshly level. Some of us are loving God like, yeah, that's my homie, that's my boy. But God's like, no, I'm not your boy. No, I'm not your homie. No, I'm not your boo. No, I'm not your crush. I am the king of kings. I am the Lord of lords. I am your savior. Amen. I need the energy of 
your love to match the energy of my love because the energy of my love has me here at night, Nicodemus, talking to you when this is a conversation that should be being had with all of the Pharisees. But you're the only one that's willing to come out and listen. And even your listening is jaded right now because you're coming at night. And what Jesus was trying to do here is help Nicodemus see that while Nicodemus was coming by night to see Jesus, Jesus made it clear that, that God gave his only son for his redemption and he did it in broad daylight out of the open. You show me in the word where it says that Jesus hung on the cross from the 10th to the 12th hour. You show me where it says that somebody turned on the light in the backyard so they could make sure that Jesus was gone. And I'll show you a Bible that's not a Bible. That's right. God did it out in the open because he was not ashamed of the gospel that was playing out right before the eyes of the people. He was not ashamed of the gift that he was giving them. And many of them didn't even realize it was a gift and rejected the gift. And he said to us, we've got to take the same approach. That's why the scripture was written. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God needs us to love him with the same measure of energy that he loves us. He needs us to take our walk seriously. He needs us to take our love for Christ as serious as God took redeeming us from eternal damnation. God wants us to be equally sincere in loving him. He wants us to be willing to give the very best of our service to him, just like he gave the very best of his son to us. We need to take that hallmark approach when we care enough to send the very best. But far too many of us are sending representatives because we're not willing to take that veil off. Pastor, what do you mean by veil? What I mean by veil is this. Well, God, I love you, and I'm trying to do this thing right, but I still smoke, God. I still drink, I still do this, I still do that. Like, God doesn't know that. Mm. And what the enemy is doing is putting layers of separation between you and God by putting a veil that doesn't need to be over your face. Over your face. By your hand. And that's the scary part about it. I remember when God was in the process of healing me and preparing me for my wife. That there was a point in time, very, very early when I knew I loved her, that I had to go to God. I'm like, God, I love this woman. I know I love this woman, but I know that my capacity to love this woman is greater than this. And the reason why I know that the capacity to love this woman is greater than this is because the love that I have for her, that I proclaim for her in my heart, I'm hearing an echo. And you're looking at me like, what do you mean? Carpentry 101, when you put a wall in a big room like this, and you don't put insulation in because you throw the wall up quickly, what happens is because the sound is not being stopped by the insulation, whatever goes on in the room, if the room behind it is empty, there's an echo in the room. And that tells a good carpenter that there's more room than what we see here. And Holy Spirit let me know the reason why you hear an echo, son, is because there's a wall that you built that needs to be torn down. But God, I love you. I know you love me, but you've not trusted me enough to tear down that wall. Because if tearing down that wall is going to force you to deal with some pain, and tearing down that wall is going to force you to deal with some stuff that you've got to deal with, and tearing down that wall is going to force you to sacrifice some stuff. But most importantly, and let me tear down that wall, that's helping me see that you're serious about loving this person. And God has said, I need my children to tear down the walls that they built because they're not taking me seriously. Because they're not doing the work of ministry I've called them to do. Because they're content inside the four walls of the church and not going out. Because the church is not the building. The church is them. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are praying mm -hmm. to find a good church. Lord, lead me to a good church. Lead me to a good church. Lead me to a spirit-filled church. Lead me to a Bible-believing church. Lead me to a Holy Ghost-filled church. You know what they're praying to find? They're praying to find us. That's right. But we don't love God enough to trust him to strip away the stuff that's keeping us away from doing the work that he's given us to do. And Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, I need you to take this thing seriously. 
I need you to understand the love that God has for you. I need you to understand that he loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And he sent him for a reason. He sent him because he wanted to put you back in right standing with him. Who in their right mind wants to put someone that they've made who they are? That purposely turned their back on them. An ally again. Who does that? Someone has made the choice mm -hmm. that I want the best for them even if it means the worst for me. Someone that made the choice because they see something in them. Because they put something in them that has value and has reward. And Jesus was teaching Nicodemus the most important lesson of love. And that lesson is that love is saving. Amen. Amen. Love doesn't throw stuff away. Amen. Love don't give up. Love don't move on to the next one. Love keeps on trying until the father says stop. When the David Michael Jackson transitioned from this earth, the story said that the individuals that were working on him worked on him for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes after he stopped breathing. I'm not a doctor. But from health class, I remember it takes anywhere from four to six minutes to choke somebody out. If one is deprived of oxygen longer than 10 minutes, in most cases, their brain dead and stuff is just not going to function. Mm -hmm. These folks worked on Michael Jackson for 45 minutes. Why? Because they didn't want to let him go. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to let him go. But you got to remember, no matter how big we get on this side, because Michael, Michael Jackson had become a pop icon, which an icon in and of itself is something that's not of God because that's something that's raised up and viewed and worshipped as a God. Michael Jackson had become someone that people began to idolize and worship. That's right. But it took somebody, it took a doctor, it took a physician to finally call it. Because when someone expires, no matter how long they've been there, it has to be someone that's credentialed to make the call. Mm -hmm. If you find somebody that's already expired, I mean, talk cold to the touch, rigor mortis, the whole nine. Everything in you is letting you know that they're gone, but you don't have the credentials, and I'm going somewhere with this, you don't have the credentials to make the call. Mm -hmm. Because God can move any way he wants to move. I've read stories about people that have been dead 10 minutes and all of a sudden just got up. That's right. So don't tell me what God can't do. So what Jesus will let Nicodemus know here is that what God really wants to do is he wants to reconcile with man. And it's so awesome because God took the first step because here again, the whole premise of love, because God's love is open and he's able to love with his whole heart. And God made the choice that I want man that I created in my presence. I'm going to build a branch. I'm going to use my son to structure and paint the bridge. And all you need to do is walk across the bridge. Because verse 17 tells us about this bridge. Verse 17 tells us that God didn't send his son into the world to condemn it, but that the world through him might be saved. If you're leaving a place going to another major city, there are expressways, and the expressways will take you all over the city. But when you're ready to leave the city, that's what the expressways are for, because there are signs that will tell you the next major city that's down the road. When I leave to go back home and see my kids, and I get on 94, and I get to the place where I can either turn left or turn right. If I turn left, I'm going to Green Bay, which is the next city that way. If I turn right, I'm going to Chicago. Which the next city that way. Mm -hmm. So the expressway is designed to help you get to the next destination. The road is built to get you to the next stop on your journey. So what else said today that we don't go far enough in our journey. We think just getting to the cross is enough for the stop. God wants to change us completely. Jesus is not on the cross anymore for us because we've accepted him. He's there for individuals that don't know God. That's right. But what he's saying here to Nicodemus is this. Everybody here read the, the, the Love Languages, the Love Languages book? 
married brother. This blew me away. God knew that man's love language was acts of service. And he sent his son to make the ultimate sacrifice as an act of loving service to him. God loved us enough to initiate the reconciliation of the relationship by speaking to man in his love language with the intent of man responding by coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says in verse 17, and it has to be phrased that way because of what happened in the garden. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world because if he had sent him here for religious purposes, Jesus would have pointed out every single thing wrong and driven everybody away from him. But what Jesus did is he met people where they were, he spoke to them in language they could understand, he gave them examples they could relate to, and all roads led back to the Father. Because that was the next major stop. And that was because God loved us enough he knew the value that we carry in his grand plan. He knew our value to him. And he made the choice, if they're not going to come to me, I'm going to go to them. If that happens today in relationships, you get talked about, man, you soft, girl, you whoop. What are you talking about? He did you wrong. What do you mean she did you wrong? You know what? It's not your place to call this thing. It's not your place to call this relationship. You're not credentialed to do it because you've not been in it up 10 years. You weren't there when the words were said. You weren't there when the actions were taken because I know that wasn't my wife. I, I know that wasn't my husband. I know that wasn't my child. That's right. How dare you make the call on something that you're not qualified to make the call on. I'm a praying man of God. I'm a praying woman of God. How dare you make the call that there's only one individual that's credentialed and qualified to make the call on it. I don't care if it's 45 years. I don't care how long it is. Unless and until God says it's over, I'm standing on the promises that he made to me. Because he loved me enough to bring me back from where I was. He loved me enough to build a bridge and provide me with an opportunity Amen. to get back. And now that I understand, I've made up my mind for my energy and love for him to match his energy and love for me. So there's nothing you can do or say that will turn me away from it. There's nothing you can do or say that will turn me around. So here we have Nicodemus standing at the crossroads. And he's looking perplexed at Jesus. And then Jesus hits him with these two verses. And when he hits him with verse 17, he circles it. I picture my mind's eye. And he's telling Nicodemus that what God is doing here is he's challenging you, Nicodemus. He's challenging you to make your way back to him through receiving his Messiah at the appropriate time. He's challenging you to change how you're living and to get your energy matching his. He's challenging you to get out of your comfort zone and realize what you're worth and realize that what you're doing now is good, but God has something better for you. And he has something better for you because he set a sacrifice for you. He has something better for you because he's serious about you and sincere about you. He has something better for you because salvation has come for you and you don't know it yet, but salvation is closer to you than you think. God has issued the same challenge to us to make our way back to him through receiving Christ as Savior. Not because it's fashionable, not because it's hip, not because it's cool, but because it's an act of service to the Father. Because he initiated the reconciliation six hours one Friday. And he's not giving up on it because that happened 2,024 years ago. Remember I said they kept working on Michael Jackson 45 minutes, right? Until somebody credential called it. Mm -hmm. There's somebody walking around out there right now. I'm laying eyes on somebody in the spirit right now. They're standing across the street. That for 2,024 years and counting, that soul has been running away from Jesus. And it'd be easy to say, man, they're a lost cause. Man, what's the point? They've been out there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Jesus is like, mm-mm, not pulling the plug on them because they're made in my image. 
They're made in my likeness. I love them enough to get these scars. So if I love them enough to get these scars, you can love them enough to keep going to them when I send you. Because I'm not calling it on this one. It may look like the end for you, but the beginning hasn't even come for them yet. God desires us to take these lessons in love and apply them in life. Because what happens is that as we apply them in life, we're going to begin to see doors open in the lives of other people. We're going to begin to see God glorified. And we're going to begin to expand our horizon of what is possible because we truly believe our God. At that point in time, Nicodemus was re-energized. And if you go through and look and read about Nicodemus, you'll see he's not mentioned very much more in the Bible. But each time he's mentioned is significant in the gospel story. Nicodemus was transformed that day. And God desires to transform this city one soul at a time. Amen. Without us, he has no hands. Amen. He has no feet. He has no voice. He has no mind, but this is how deep it is. Without us, he has no vehicle to demonstrate his love to those that he loves. Let's learn these lessons in love Amen. that Nicodemus learned. Yes, Jesus. And so as Jesus said to Nicodemus, so I say now, class is dismissed. Amen. Amen. We thank and praise God for his word on tonight. We thank and praise God for the challenge that I know I personally have accepted after all I've heard over the past two days. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to, to be used by him. See, so often what happens is that we'll hear a good word and we'll take good notes and we won't go back and look at him. It's kind of like the man who, who receives it and then runs away and as soon as he leaves, he forgets what manner of man he is. The devil just comes in and swoops everything up and then right back in the same state. God is saying that cycle is over. That cycle is done. A new cycle is now starting. Whereas my love comes in, it washes, it cleanses, it changes. And that moves from generation to generation as it moves from heart to heart. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're thankful that everyone in the sanctuary this evening has an active relationship with Christ and we praise God for that. But each of us know at least one person that doesn't have that active relationship yet. And love doesn't sit idly by and wonder when and wonder what if. Love is an action word. So as Holy Spirit places that individual or those individuals on your mind, let's pray that that the eyes of their understanding might be light, enlightened, that they might realize that God is calling and realize that they're loved. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your love. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness and for your understanding. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be used by you. Father, the brothers and sisters that are on our minds and in our hearts right now, we pray in the name of Jesus that every stronghold that the enemy has them connected to be broken right now and the assignment canceled and sent back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus. Every hindering spirit that will keep them from receiving your good news and you as Savior, Lord, we bind them up and send them back to the pit of hell in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for opening the eyes of their understanding and enlightening them. But most importantly, we thank you, God, for opening the mouths of us that know you Give us the boldness to share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Give us the resolve to not give up and not give in, oh God. Give us a desire to share with them the same love language that God you share with us. Allow us to be used by you to serve them that they might say yes to you, oh God. Let us not worry about the level of convenience. Let us not worry about the degree of difficulty. Let us not worry about the potential cost. Instead, give us a resolve to see your face. 
Help us to remember, God, God, that you loved us enough to give for us. And we're simply giving to them what you've given to us. Because there's more than enough to share, God. We thank you for that man, for that woman, for that boy, for that girl being saved today, God. We thank you for them truly being saved and spirit-filled, oh God. We thank you for them, Lord God, finding a place that they can work out their soul salvation in with fear and trembling, oh God. And for those that are out there whose names are not on our minds and on our hearts, oh God, directly, that are praying for you to send them to a Bible-believing church, that, that are praying for you to send them to a Holy Ghost filled church that are praying for you to send them to a church that loves you. Father God, send us across the path of those people because we are the church, oh God. And give us a resolve to love them as you love us and share your love with them. We thank you for the increase, God. We thank you for the victory, God. We thank you for the praise reports, God. We thank you for the transformation of our city, one soul at a time, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Won't you put your hands together for the word? Hallelujah. We thank and praise God for the word. And we thank and praise God for the work that lies ahead. Amen. But I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the transformation that's coming. I understand that there's an investment that needs to be made. I'm ready to make the investment because the rewards, the return on the investment, man, read the prospectus, read the Bible. Eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither has it even entered into the hearts of man what God has prepared for those that love him, those that function in agape towards him, those that do the work of teaching the lessons and love to other people. Now's our time to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen? Amen. 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 Truly a, a joyous time in our worship service because it's an opportunity to let the Lord know what he's worth to us right. by giving back to him not only what he's asked for, but what he deserves. Amen? Amen. Please understand that in your giving, you're never giving it to a man, nor are you ever giving it to a house. Yes, this house is good ground. This is fertile ground to sow into, but you're giving unto God because God will sow back into you because he loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. There are many ways that you can give here at Living Witness Ministries. You can give by cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Again, that's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. You can give by tidally or give the fine at Living Witness Ministries, LaGrange, Illinois. If you look it up there, you can please you can give those, that to either one of those. Please be mindful that if you opt to give through one of those means, that they do charge service fees. So if there's an amount that God has given to you in your mind, be mindful of that and make the adjustment for the fee. We're almost there as far as sales. The sale is set up. It, I just need to get the phone number. I don't have it. I will have it next week, but we are equipped now to receive uh, offerings through Zelle as well. And if by chance you're in the sanctuary, you need an envelope, raise your hand. We'll be more than happy to get one to you. Amen. So as you prepare your gifts, let's pray. Father, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver because we know that the gift without the giver indeed is barren, oh God. So we pray that you bless and multiply both, God, for your glory. Use them both and bless them both to be a blessing to the kingdom, oh God. As we give, we give with great joy and we give in anticipation of how you're going to use the gifts to bless others because we love you and we love you enough to love our brothers and our sisters that are going to be blessed by the same. Multiply both, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, the gift and the giver. And as you do it, Lord, we give your name, the honor and praise forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And we thank and praise God for every gift. Um, for those that have June birthdays, we definitely wish you a happy birthday. Uh, the LWM family loves you and appreciates you. We are mindful that your day is a special day. We are mindful of the fact that the world is a better place because you are in it. Amen. And we don't take that for granted, nor do we take that lightly. We thank and praise God for you and wish you many, many, many more. I know my son's birthday is this month. My granddaughter's birthday is next month. Uh, this month, a friend of mine's birthday is this month. It was actually yesterday because yesterday was the longest day of the year my birthday was yesterday so so if your birthday falls in june we wish you a happy and blessed birthday amen 
Amen. Our Bible studies are uh, still on Wednesday evening, uh, 7 p.m. Got some exciting news. Uh, announcement is going to be coming up very, very soon regarding our Bible study. So definitely stay tuned. We're very excited about how God is moving. Very excited about, you know, doors that he's opening for us. And we thank and praise God for that. But in the meantime, we're still in the midst of our series on what would you do? And this series has truly proven to be a blessing as we've gotten a chance to really dialogue about real topics and, and real subjects um, that are presented as scenarios in real life that are framed against the backdrop of scripture and scenarios that individuals in the Bible found themselves in. And we're looking at it in relation to what, our, what we would do versus what the word says to do and just looking at the difference between the two and how we can work to become better examples of what the word says. So if you decide to be a part of that, please you know, get the link from our website, uh, www.livingwiththisministries.org. There's a link right on the website. Click on that. It'll take you right into the Zoom. We're there 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings, Central. So please feel free to join us. Amen. 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 We do thank and praise God for this time together. Pastor Anson, is there anything you'd like to say, sir? It's blessed to be here. Praise God. We're blessed to have you. And we Amen. thank and praise God for you, sir. If there's nothing else in all hearts and minds, to clear the stand so that we can be dismissed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for all that we've experienced in this day, oh God. We've had a full day of worship. We've had a full day of praise. We've had a full day of testimony and of teaching, oh God. And we thank you for the capstone that you put on it this evening with your word, God. Make us doers of this word and not hearers only, Lord. Make us doers of it, God, that we will be about your business and doing things in a way that pleases you, Father God. Use us, Father God, to teach these lessons in love to others, Lord, that they would come to love you as we love you, O oh God, and that they would come to love others as you instructed us to love others, O oh God. Because as that's done, we thank you for the increases coming to the kingdom as a result of it. Yes, Lord. Watch over us as we travel from this place to our homes and destinations. Bless us to find them and our loved ones safe, O oh God. Keep us until we come together at the designated hour to worship. And as you do these things and so much more, we'll be mindful to give your name the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart in agreement say amen. 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 Make sure you hug somebody and tell them you love them before you go. God bless. Amen.